It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. Um, I am proud to say that I am part of the Great Britain sitting volleyball team. And I've had the huge honor this summer of taking part in the London Paralympic Games. Um, a dream that I've been working towards over the last few years, uh, but I, that hasn't always been my dream. Seven years ago, I was on the way to work as an international marketing manager, um, got on the circle line and it, it changed my life forever. I was sat just four foot away from uh, one of the suicide bombers that decided to hit London that morning. Um, my family frantically searched for me for over 36 hours uh, and they finally found me at the Royal London Hospital, completely unrecognisable. Um, I'd lost both my legs above the knee, uh, I'd lost about 80% of my blood, I'd been resuscitated several times and, and I was in a deep coma. I was so unrecognisable that when um, the police asked my brother and sister to identify me, uh, apparently they, they looked at me and said, no, that's, that's not Martine. Um, so nine days later, uh, I came out of my coma and uh, looked down and saw that my legs were missing. Um, and I can't really describe to you how I felt that day. I just, I pretty much felt like my world had ended. I just couldn't believe that out of the millions of people that travelled on the tube every day, I was the most injured survivor. Um, I often thought I'd have more chance of winning the lottery than sitting where I was sitting that day. Um, but I'm sure that, you know, there, there are people out there sort of that, that understand this. And one thing that really sticks in my mind is that my family, you know, they, they just kept reassuring me. But I just didn't know how I was going to carry on. And uh, I remember this one day and I was just crying and crying very, very early on in my recovery. And my mum, who is my inspiration, she grabbed my face and she said, Martine, you are still here and you could have been on that train that day and you could have got a really bad head injury, but you didn't. So you are still Martine and you can get new legs. And I'm, I'm sure that there's people here today who have been through something equally traumatic or, or know of someone that, ha that has. And, and I'm sure that they would tell you that there was a turning point that they were faced with. And uh, for me, I, I, I remember this one day, uh, still at the Royal London Hospital, um, and it was actually the day I was supposed to be bridesmaid for my best friend. But instead, I was strong enough to go up to the gym physio for the first time. Um, and went up there and, and looked around this room and saw all, all manner of different people. And um, I saw a girl who'd lost both her arms and both her legs through meningitis. Who's, she's actually one of my friends now. But um, I, lost, um, I met other, other victims of the bombings that might not have been as physically injured as me, but psychologically they were, they were completely traumatised. And this was the day that I found out how many people died that day. Uh, 52 people, like me, minding their own business on the way to work, got killed and, and I had no idea at all. And uh, this was the day that I sort of said, Martine, pull yourself together. <laughs> You've got two choices. Either you can feel sorry for yourself for the rest of your life and decide that you're never going to walk again, or decide that, that life carries on. And yes, it was an awful thing that happened, worse than anything I could imagine, but there's always people worse off than you. And I thought, I didn't die. I didn't die that day. Um, I was a lucky one. I had a choice, and I, I had a choice to live my life, whatever it may hold. So that was the day that, that I decided that I was going to walk again and um, went off to the Queen Mary's Hospital in, um, in uh, sorry, the Douglas Bardi unit in Queen Mary's Hospital and uh, started learning, learning to walk and first learnt to walk on, on what they called these, they're, they're rockers. I actually thought they were completely winding me up when they showed me them because I thought they looked like Douglas Bardi's legs from the 1940s. But uh, I did learn to walk and um, I'm not saying it was easy, you can see from the expression there. I think it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Um, but for, I did finally get my prosthetic legs, my sea legs. And uh, after nearly a year in hospital, I left. And I, I think this time for me was the, was the hardest time. You know, I'd been in an environment where it was completely normal to have legs and arms missing. 
and now I was back to normal life, not living in my flat in London, but living with my mum, living in a house that I couldn't even walk out of. And again, I remember this day where I just kept crying. I kept crying and crying, and my sister came to me and she said, you know, what's, what's wrong? And I said, all I want to do is walk out of this house and go home. All I want to do is walk out of this house and go home. And I think when you go through something traumatic in your life um, and your life completely changes, what I found really hard was the memories of how you used to do things before. You know, one day you're someone and then suddenly the next day you're so someone else. So I decided in order to get over these feelings, um, I had to do something different with my life and, and I had to grab every opportunity I could because, because I could and there were 52 people that day that, that didn't have that opportunity. Um, and I knew I had to do something as a result of losing my legs, otherwise to me it would have just all been a complete waste of time while, while I was there. So the first thing I did when I, when I came out of hospital, literally weeks later, I um, got a scholarship for Flying Scholarships for the Disabled, which is a brilliant charity. Uh, obviously, I turned around to my mum and dad and picked them up off the floor after I said I was going off to South Africa for six weeks to learn to fly planes. Uh, my husband, uh, my boyfriend at the time, but he's my husband now, really looked worried about the thought of me flying a plane. I've got no idea why. <laughs> but it was definitely something I had to do. Um, Although, actually, looking at this photo, I think my husband might have been right, because I'm sure I'm supposed to be facing forward whilst <laughs> flying a plane, instead of smiling into the camera. Uh, but as well as the opportunity to fly a plane, it gave me my strength and it gave me my independence back, something that I lost when, when I had my accident. And um, this was really the, the, the start of me making my life different and, and the sort of start of me grabbing every opportunity I could. So whether it was flying a plane or whether it was skiing or whether it was jumping out a plane. Um, I just had to grab every opportunity I could and I, I grabbed it with, with both hands. So, you know, we all know in life bad things do sometimes happen and we've got no control over certain things in life. Uh, but what I've learned over the last few years is that good can come out of bad and um, I've done all these things and I would never have done them if it weren't for going through the most traumatic time in my life and, and losing my legs. So um, I truly believe anything is possible. Anything is possible as long as you believe. And um, as, as you, you heard in, in the video, I do count myself lucky. I, I was a lucky one that day. I survived and it, it made me look at the world in a, in a very different way. And, I know it's easy for me to sit on a stool, actually it's not easy for me to sit on a stool, but it's easy for me to go, you know, you can do this and you can do that. And it doesn't happen overnight, it, but it is a process that, that can happen. Um, but I think what is forgotten sometimes is what your family and friends go through. Um, you know, when, when something traumatic happens, everyone focuses on the victim, but it, it, it happens to everyone. And uh, there's been positives for me, but also positives for them as well. My, my husband realised life was too short, and as a result, he pursued his dream of running his own photography business. My family discovered a, a strength that they would never have discovered if it weren't for going through the most traumatic thing of our lives. And uh, my nephew, well, he can believe his luck when I took him to Walton Towers and realised, because I was in a wheelchair, he didn't have to queue up for any of the rides. <laughs> So, you know, it's really, it's really not all that bad. Um, and talking about my husband, we, we finally got married, which was an amazing day, and we finally had our, our beautiful son, Oscar. But it was really at this point where, even though Oscar's my whole life, I really realised I needed a goal again in my life and a dream. Um, and, and I wanted to feel that ambition and that hunger I used to feel at work. I'll tell you sitting at home and watching Jeremy Carr when Cash in the Attic is not as good as it's cracked up to be. <laughs> so, I was invited to go to a Paralympic Potential Day where uh, I went there and tried all different sports, um, but fell in love with sitting volleyball. Um, and I started playing for a club in, in London, and then in October 2009, I was asked to try out for the first ever GB team, 
And as you can see, lovely expression. Um, that's me, number seven on my, on my shirt. Uh, a number that I purposely chose, as seven seven could be seen as very negative in my life, as, as well as other people's life. But I really wanted to make it uh, a positive. And um, what I love about sitting volleyball is that you don't play in your chair. You know, we're, we're, we're moving constantly round on the floor. It was actually first called Bumble which is quite an unfortunate name. Thank God they changed it. Although, because we do move around constantly on the floor, we've now adopted the name Floor Cleaners. Because by the time we've finished a match, the floor is absolutely gleaming. Um, and uh, the first time I played, I thought, this looks easy. Literally, the next day, I couldn't move my arms past here. And excuse my French, but my ass was so sore. I'm sure a lot of you have used pseudo creme before on your children or uh, grandchildren or, or nieces or nephews. Well, I, I was using that by the bucket load next to me. Um, but I went back and I'm, I'm so glad I did. Uh, the girls are absolutely brilliant. I mean, sport has become such a big part of my life. But it's also given me my confidence back. It's also improved my self-esteem. It, it got me out meeting a great bunch of girls, girls that have been through very similar things to me. But also, it's given me a goal again, and it gave me a new dream to work towards. Um, but it's, it's not been easy. There's been sacrifices or, or choices that, that we've all had to make. I mean, for instance, when we did go to the World Championships, we weirdly went on the 7th of July, our first ever international. But I missed my, my son's first birthday. Uh, but I knew that it was something that I had to do. So. We did work and work and work, and literally over the last few years, you know, literally blood, sweat and tears, and we finally got to the Paralympics this summer. A dream that we have been working so hard for for the last few years. And, and suddenly I was, I was representing my country in a sport I absolutely love, but in a weird, a sport, a weird twist, a sport I would never have played if it weren't for going through the most traumatic time in my life. Um, so there's been so many brilliant memories this year, um, all of them I'll never forget, you know, entering the arena for the first ever time, you know, representing my country, seeing my family in the crowd looking so proud, you know, all the games makers, all, all you guys, you know, all the great British public that have been supporting us. But for me, the opening and closing ceremonies, that, that really got me, got me here. And it got me there because it reminded me of, of the journey that I've been on. Um, and it also reminded me of my team me. And team me, we've all got a team me, and we're part of someone else's team me. My team me is made up of my husband and Oscar and my mum and dad and my family, my teammates, my coach, my physio. And, you know, when I was walking around in front of 80,000 people going absolutely mad, I was doing it for me, but I was doing it for them as well. And actually doing it for anyone that's been through some, some adversity in their life and they, they'd got over it. So yeah, what an absolutely amazing summer, uh, a once in a lifetime experience. You know, the, the, the flame will never go out for me as I truly believe the power of sport can do so much. Yeah, you know, it can get out, it, it, it can go out and it can make people fit, it can make them more confidence, but I think we can really use it for good social change. And for me, well, I always felt like I was meant to do this journey. Um, for me, things always seemed to point to the 7th of July uh, and the Olympics and the Paralympics. You know, it was, it was the day before that it was announced that London had won the Olympic bid. It was the last thing I was reading on the tube in the newspaper before the bombs went off was about the Olympics. And I remember thinking at the time, how am I gonna get tickets to this? You know, I'm a Londoner, I need to get tickets to this. And now in a very weird twist of fate, I've just actually come back from, from taking part. So, you know, people say things happen for a reason. And I really, I can't help but think that that is true. Um, people say to me, aren't you, aren't you angry? with what happened. And I can truly say, hand on heart, no, not really, because I'm 
doing things now that I never, ever dreamed of. Um, and someone told me a, a, a saying very early on in my recovery, and it stuck with me, and, and that's, if not you, then who? If not now, then when? And um, life changes, doesn't it? Things happen in our lives, good and bad, and we need to adapt. We need to accept those changes and become stronger. And again, it's, it's not easy, but is anything easy worth having in life? But I truly believe that new dreams can come out of the worst situations. So whatever stage you may be in life, whatever happens in your life, you still can have your dreams. So thank you ever, ever so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>